Please welcome Julia White. Welcome to Sapphire 2022. Welcome to everyone joining us here in Orlando and joining us online from around the world. As with every year, we have an incredible Sapphire event lined up for you. Hearing about the latest innovations, learning from each other and connecting as an SAP community. It's truly heartwarming to be able to bring us all together in person after these past two years. And we've brought back Sapphire in a new way to reflect our world today. Every detail optimizes for sustainability, from fully compostable food packaging to 100% digital and reusable signage. The event is open and spacious, designed with hundreds of locations for small groups to connect. Whether you're in here in person or joining us online, I promise you are going to walk away energized by the possibility of what we can accomplish together. So without further ado, let's get this started. I'd like to introduce SAP's CEO, Christian Klein. Thank you, Julia, and welcome to Sapphire. Welcome to everyone joining us from, a world, from around the world virtually. And welcome back to all of you here in Orlando. Can you imagine the last on-site Sapphire took place already three years ago. And as much as we all got used to work virtually, I cannot tell you how much I missed this week here in Orlando to experience live what makes SAP so special. You, our community with over 400,000 customers and over 23,000 partners from over 140 countries. Can you actually remember your first Sapphire? <laughs> I can. 15 years ago, I came down here the elevators, walked into this massive conference hall, and I thought to myself, wow, what an amazing community. Until today, that gives me the energy, the passion, to focus every day on the success of our customers and partners. Now, before we move on, let's pause for a second. I would like to take this opportunity to once again express our solidarity with all the people in Ukraine. We stand side by side with them against this unjustified and horrible war. And these people, especially the children, they need our help. And that is why we're going to double your donation to UNICEF during Sapphire. So please <laughs> scan the QR code and let's make this donation as big as we can. Time flies. And believe it or not, SEP turns 50 this year. For 50 years, we have revolutionized together the way businesses are run. And in the next 50 years, together, we will continue to deliver market making innovations. And while the world around us has changed so significantly, our purpose is more relevant than ever. To help the world, the world run better in times of geopolitical tensions, disruptive industry transformations, supply chain disruptions, and to improve people's lives in times of war and climate change. 
At SAP, we are no politicians. We are also no doctors. We can't make any political decisions or cure diseases. But what we can do is to help you to overcome your biggest challenges by using our technology, our innovations, our data, and our business know-how. So what are the biggest challenges our enterprises are facing in the next decade? I talked to many of you. And here are the three key challenges you shared with me. First challenge, our industries. They are changing faster than ever. Let's face it. The lifespan of Fortune 500 companies will shrink by 50% this decade. But to respond to such an industry transformation and subsequently change how a company wants, including the DNA and the culture, is the most difficult part of any transformation, especially when your existing business model is still financially successful. And people, yes, we as human beings, we tend to be where we risk and change our worse. So far, only 25% of all enterprises have seen concrete outcomes of their investments into digital transformation. Let's move on to the second challenge, our supply chain. They are disrupted. Recent surveys stated that over 75% of all companies worldwide are facing supply chain disruptions. Why is that? In the last decade, many, many parts of our supply chains got outsourced to different suppliers, to different countries. And with that, we increased the complexity. And now, we are seeing how fragile our supply chains are, caused by COVID-related lockdowns and unforeseen changes in customer demand, where it sometimes takes forever until our supply chains are adapted. In essence, our supply chains lack end-to-end -end transparency, and as a result, resiliency and agility. And finally, our third challenge, we can act on sustainability without transparency. We have to run our enterprises more sustainably to fight the climate change. And according to McKinsey, up to 70% of profits can be at risk when a company is not running sustainably. So let's face it, sustainability has become a business imperative. The green line is as much as important as, as the top and the bottom line. Your customers, employees, and investors, they will follow the enterprises who run sustainable. But today, we are lacking the very basics. We are lacking the transparency to take action. I always believed in, you can't manage what you can't measure. So today, our team is ready to show you how we turn these challenges with our innovations into significant business opportunities for your company. But we don't do this alone. We do this together with our amazing ecosystem of more than 23,000 partners. And today, there is great news to announce regarding our partnership with McKinsey. I'm very happy to hear from Bob about our partnership. As we all know, the challenges that have emerged over the last couple of years have given organizations across sectors a real sense of urgency. The path to impact increasingly goes through technology. McKinsey's clients are looking to us to help them make better use of technology to deliver their change agenda and to make it stick. 
As SAP and McKinsey have many joint clients, it's natural to form this alliance to make it easier for our clients to access the best of both firms' capabilities, supporting them on their transformation journey to the cloud. The combination of our capabilities can change the way leaders across sectors and geographies transform their businesses, delivering not only bottom line results, but delivering sustainable, inclusive growth. And we both aspire to nothing less. I'm excited to see how this alliance will continue to evolve in the future. So, speaking of business transformation, you need to keep pace in a world that is changing faster than ever. So let's explore the first business opportunity. How can we transform each and every enterprise into an intelligent enterprise? This is why we introduced WISE with SAP, our holistic business transformation offering in the cloud. From my own experience working with many customers, a true business transformation will not happen just with a technical IT migration to the cloud. With WISE with SAP, we take you on a transformation journey. No matter in which industry you play, no matter the size of your company, no matter if you are an existing or a new customer to SAP. We're going to tailor your transformation journey exactly to your needs. So let's start the WISE journey. With SAP Signavio, our process management and, da and data mining solution, seeing is believing. What do I mean with that? I observed in so many IT projects, passive business stakeholders, resistance against change, not enough leadership from the top to make this change happen. With SAP Signavio, we are going to benchmark your existing end-to-end -end process landscape against the best practices and data we collected from over 40,000 customers. And these benchmarks will help you to make the case for change allowing your business and IT leaders to discover, to discover new growth opportunities by launching new business models spanning across the go-to-market and the supply chain processes. And you will discover inefficiencies by internal process complexity. And we will enable you to simplify and to potentially automate via AI or RPA. The business transformation, as part of WISE with SAP, goes hand in hand with the transformation of your IT landscape. Because by harmonizing business processes, we're going to enable you to remove the complexity in your IT landscape, the customizations, the modifications, to move to a clean and modular application landscape in the cloud. Here, your IT organization will get the agility they need with automated updates and continuous innovations. The SAP Business Technology Platform will serve as the integration and extension layer. Integration means removal of your data silos. One semantic data model will allow you to run business processes end-to-end -end and to steer your company real-time with a 360 view on your business. And of course, by selecting WISE with SAP, you get end-to-end -end accountability for system monitoring and performance, as well as cybersecurity, no matter if you're going to select to one in the SAP or in the hyperscaler cloud. And trust me, end-to-end -end accountability matters if we are talking about your mission-critical business processes. And with WISE with SAP, we make sure your innovation journey never stops. We want to infuse continuous innovations into your business processes. According to your business processes, we will enable 
via our platform access to our latest innovations, for example, in the industry cloud. After one year, we already have 2,000 customers who have selected WISE with SAP. More than 60% of these customers are new customers to SAP. Welcome to the family. And the brands you're seeing here on this chart are actually ranging from hundreds to hundreds of thousands of users. Many of those actually adapted already all of our modular cloud applications in the ERP space. So you see, WISE is here for everyone. Let me give you a couple of examples. Trusted partners like Microsoft, Accenture, HCL, who, by the way, celebrated their go live yesterday. Congratulations to the team. Atos and Wipro selected WISE with SAP because they see the benefit as a customer. And as a partner, they will support your transformation journey. Another great example is, is actually Philips Domestic Appliance. With WISE with SAP, we enable their business transformation. And we are removing their data silos to make informed portfolio decisions across the end-to-end -end product lifecycle. Or take IBM, great partner. And as a customer, we are helping them now with WISE with SAP to transform their portfolio, investing into new business, divesting in other businesses in an agile fashion. And at the same time, we are moving over 375 terabyte of data into the cloud, consolidating 300 instances into one global instance in the cloud. And finally, there's AMD. Again, a long-standing customer of SAP, going through a huge business transformation enabled by WISE with SAP. Let's hear from the president and CEO of AMD, Lisa Su, directly about why AMD has chosen WISE with SAP. At AMD, our vision is to deliver high performance and adaptive computing that helps solve the world's toughest challenges. Our business has grown significantly over the past few years based on the strong demand for our leadership data center, PC, and gaming products. And we have turned to SAP and their business critical solutions to help enable us to rapidly scale our business. As partners since 2000, SAP is an integral part of our infrastructure. Our move to SAP S4 HANA combines both the transformation in our internal ERP with a move to a cloud-based model. We've also worked closely together on RISE with SAP to take advantage of our AMD EPIC processors to provide enterprise customers with a solution that aims to lower total cost of ownership while reducing their carbon footprint. RISE with SAP will redefine AMD's operating model, allowing us to be more productive, more innovative, and more focused on value-driven business priorities. We look forward to continuing to grow our deep partnership with SAP to bring these benefits to our joint customers. Continuous change and disruptions have been the reality in every industry across the world. To successfully navigate this reality, you need the ability to work across your end-to-end -end business processes. Let's see what this looks like, spanning the employee experience, the customer experience, and the data powering it all. Here in my executive dashboard, you see insights across the business. In this case, you can see a situation of high employee attrition and customer satisfaction trending down. Now, clearly, we need to dig into this situation and decide the right actions to take. First, let's understand the skill gap are being created based on the employee attrition. Powered by SAP success factors, I can quickly see the significant need for project managers. Now, every business leader has experienced the issue of needing to urgently find the right skills in response to a business change. Now, I can clearly see the skill gap I'm facing, so let's go address this. 
There are three primary choices I have. First, of course, I can hire people, but today's market has never been more competitive for talent, so I need more options. The second and very popular option is through skilling existing employees and ongoing employee development to meet business needs. Welcome to the new SAP Success Factors Opportunity Marketplace, where employees get matched to the business need and provided a tailored learning journey. And you know, research also shows that developing skills within your existing workforce reduces attrition and drives a more engaged workforce. Now the third option to addressing my skills gap is utilizing trained specialists, tapping into the gig economy to quickly address my business needs. With SAP Field Glass, you have direct access to a massive external workforce that is integrated both into SAP's procurement and HR systems, so that end-to-end -end process for getting the talent you need right when you need it has never been more seamless. Here you can see the total workforce composition. Now, regardless of whether you're an employee internally or externally, it's critical to provide a consumer-grade digital employee experience. And that is where the latest SAP Success Factors work zone comes in. WorkZone provides employees a simple way to manage their activities, from social media posts to the approval processes, all in one integrated mobile-first experience. Only SAP offers this seamlessly, which is why leading companies, including New York Life, Ahold Del Hayes, and Cintas, selected SAP to optimize their employee experience. Success Factors is focused on the power of many, and perhaps this is why others have walked away from the power of one. But don't just take it from me. Let's hear it from Vodafone. Vodafone Group needs to manage HR on a massive global scale. Our employees deliver fantastic service to our customers, so we want that same employee experience. And part of that is really looking at how do we make all HR processes digital only. This includes using the SAP SuccessFactors Human Experience Management Suite for all our HR functions, processes and data. Everything from recruitment to development and compensation. We now have a brilliant platform, processes and team in place that allows us to respond quickly to changes in the environment. So things like COVID, we were able to quickly respond to enable our employees to work from home. We also were able to create much richer and more immersive learning experience, even though it was still virtual. So what we have now is all HR functions, from recruitment to reward to resourcing, everything in a single global platform. And it allows us to support some of the big things we need to do as an organization. We have over 1.3 million learning interventions. We normally have over 800,000 job applications. And we now deliver services that lead to simplification, engagement, and productivity. SAP Success Factor Solutions help our people consume HR services in a way that suits them best. Now, let's switch from the employee experience to the customer experience. Here we are at Trilogy Jeans, a hypothetical 50-year-old fashion company. During the pandemic, they had strong online customer acquisition, but not all of it was profitable. And now, their in-store shopping is growing again, and they need to engage with customers in a personalized way across these touch points. But privacy laws are also making that more complicated to manage. Suddenly, a new pair of Trilogy's sustainably sourced pink jeans has taken TikTok by storm. Now, while this is great for Trilogy, they have limited inventory of these pink jeans. This means they need to manage the customers who want this popular item while also making sure they're managing their supply chain to, live, to deliver more jeans quickly. It all starts with unified data. The SAP Customer Data Platform provides a 360-degree view of the customer experience. Now, with this foundation in place, Trilogy can use this moment to earn customer trust and loyalty. Let's see how it works. Here in the Customer 360 view, you can see one of Trilogy's best customers, Maria. There's a comprehensive view of her profile while also ensuring all privacy regulations are strictly adhered to in a way that only SAP can do. 
This customer 360 view of Maria includes her recent marketing interactions, digital engagement, privacy choices, and her loyalty status. Now, Maria is a great Trilogy customer, and she wants those pink jeans. So let's make sure we have them in stock for her. Now, unexpected viral moments will always happen. And that's why Trilogy's manufacturing operations team needs the agility to meet the moment. This product dashboard brings together financial and manufacturing data from the ERP with data from the customer experience systems. You can see all aspects from the marketing campaign to product inventory to manufacturing costs. Powered by SAP Data Warehouse Cloud, Trilogy can see the comprehensive information they need to make data-driven decisions. But before Trilogy can make a decision, they need the ability to run simulations and understand outcomes and trade-offs. With the integration between the customer data platform and SAP extended planning and analysis capabilities, they can do just that. You can see here Trilogy can match the manufacturing process with customer demand and run different simulations in real time. They can determine how many pairs of jeans they can manufacture while the viral campaign is still hot and how profitable the new manufacturing run would be. Now, based on the simulation analysis, Trilogy decides to go big. They will make more jeans and they're gonna use this moment to build customer loyalty. Now they need to action this decision across their customer experience. First, in the point of sale system, customers get a next best offer to get expedited shipping and discounts for ordering those pink jeans today. In the digital customer experience, with SAP Commerce Cloud, it's easy to add that pre-order now process to the customer experience. And SAP Amarsis marketing automation updates customer email, mobile, and digital ad campaigns. And because everything has been built with SAP identity management, Trilogy can use this moment to gather customers' consent and privacy preferences as they get on the waiting list for the pink jeans. Now, this is the experience for all customers, but what about Trilogy's best customers like Maria? Using the customer data platform, Trilogy can identify their most profitable customer segment and provide customized benefits just for them. This improves loyalty with customers like Maria while ensuring Trilogy is making profitable choices. This is what's possible when you can connect the back end of business process with the front end of customer experience. It's not just about delivering the next best action. It's about delivering delightful customer experiences that capture the next best dollar. Now, whether you're in retail, financial services, healthcare, or automotive, having access to this type of integrated data and insights is a game changer. And speaking of games, interestingly, the most data intensive industry on the planet is gaming. The esports industry relies on massive real time data to make split second decisions in order to gain the edge to win. So let's see how the amazing Team Liquid works with SAP solutions to superpower their data. In the emerging world of eSports, business models are very similar to traditional sports, with merchandise, partnerships, TV and media rights. The most important part is to stay at the very top of eSports. We rely on our managers, coaches, players, and they have the know-how and insights to understand, like, when do you make a change? If our players are performing at 97%, they will not win their match. How do you find the 1% or 2% improvements? And that is what top sports and top competition is all about. It's about the 1% to 2%. I think one of the reasons why the SAP partnership is so crucial to Team Liquid is the amount of data that's available within gaming is absolutely massive. Trusted real-time insights delivered in the context of the game from the SAP Business Technology Platform maximizes the value of data, giving Team Liquid the edge to win. I think software like the ones we use together with SAP for our competitive teams, it really helps like change the culture as well. And I think that's what it's about for Team Liquid.
Thank you, Julia. So let's move on to the second challenge, disrupted supply chain. And how can we make our supply chain more transparent, resilient, and agile? End to end. Today, we want to invite you to join our SAP business network. We already have today the world's largest network of buyers, suppliers, manufacturers, and logistic providers. Millions of companies from over 190 countries are already connected today. We are building the LinkedIn of the B2B world. So why is the SAP Business Network so valuable for your enterprise? First, you are getting end-to-end -end transparency across the supply chain. We are connecting you with your suppliers, your end-tier suppliers, your manufacturing logistic providers. With blockchain technology, we enable you, you know, to trace every single asset down to the lowest level of your supply chain. At the same time, we enable you to match demand and supply in real time by connecting our demand planning solution, IBP, with extremely strong predictive demand capability. As a result, our business network will make your supply chain transparent, resilient, and agile. A great example about the power of the SAP business network is the health ministry of Ukraine. Some weeks back, they reached out and got free access to our business network. In the meantime, the health ministry is connected to over 4,000 suppliers. And in the meantime, they sourced and delivered to the people in Ukraine medical equipment and over 300,000 first aid kits with a value of over 130 million US dollars. Now, let's deep dive into the business network. Back to you, Julia. Now, over the past year, supply chain has become a daily conversation. And through these challenging times, SAP supply chain and procurement solutions have helped deliver the goods our customers rely on. With innovations using mobile, augmented reality, and robotics, SAP solutions are powering supply chain in new ways. So let's see how small process improvements can make big impacts. Well, I need a new laptop, so I'm going to buy one here in the SAP Ariba shopping app. Now, following this order, let's see how the supply chain operates from the component sourced, then manufactured into a laptop, and then ultimately shipped to me. But before production begins, our laptop manufacturer needs to source materials. Here, the manufacturer opens the latest integrated business planning to understand all the components they need to build this laptop. They quickly see the notification indicating that their regular plastic supplier has a shortage. But thanks to SAP's business network, they can use the trading partner directory to find an alternative supplier. And the network also now helps them identify more sustainable trading partners. And to help increase sustainability sourced plastics, SAP created the Rural Sourcing Project in Ghana. In urban areas of Ghana, people collect 218 tons of waste daily, providing an income for themselves. SAP built a mobile solution to ensure the collectors understand fair market value and are not exploited. This technology is simple to use and brings new plastic sources into the supply chain. So with the new recycled plastic sourced, assembly of my laptop can begin. Now in this part of the land, uh, laptop manufacturing process, augmented reality, or AR, can help. AR enables workers to be heads up and hands on in the assembly line and when comp in completing repairs. And each step of the process is guided by visual steps and uses automatic data capture, syncing directly back to S4HANA Cloud to reduce errors, 
and improve efficiency. Now, with my laptop manufactured, it can now move to the warehouse. Today, we're announcing SAP Warehouse Robotics, enabling people and a wide range of warehouse robots to work seamlessly together. When the laptop assembly is done, the production worker can trigger a pickup request for the robot from vendors like Locus, as you can see here, and it carries it to the packaging station. Now, to further empower workers, SAP and Apple have partnered together to bring a new set of apps to the warehouse floor. Today, we're announcing the first two that are delivering the state-of-the-art experiences and innovation across iOS devices. Now, in warehousing, efficiency and flexibility are key. So first, we're announcing SAP Warehouse Operators for iOS. The app optimizes the main warehousing tasks, picking, packing, and putting away. It uses AI for efficient barcode scanning and uses indoor location functionality for simplified warehouse navigation. And with s Cloud integration, your warehouse and processes systems are all connected. So now my laptop is loaded and ready for delivery. Now to ensure prompt and reliable delivery, the second new app, SAP Direct Distribution, empowers the driver experience. This app gives drivers the ability to execute on a paperless delivery on their daily route using camera, location management, and offline capabilities of iOS. Now, these first two apps are available on iOS today with more apps in development. Now, since I've ordered a ThinkPad, let's go check in with Lenovo chairman and CEO Yang Yuanqing on how Lenovo is using SAP solutions to power their world-class supply chain. I'm very happy to see the continued enhancements to your supply chain solutions. Lenovo delivers over 150 million products a year, which means about five products every second to our customers around the world with 96% on-time delivery. SAP is a key partner in this effort with world-class supply chain solutions. Together with SAP, Lenovo is building new state-of-the-art smart factories globally. These new smart factories are running S4 HANA on Lenovo infrastructure with end-to-end order-to-delivery solutions, connecting over 2,000 suppliers to millions of customers. They will definitely take Lenovo manufacturing to a whole new level. Looks like I've got a delivery for Julia White. Oh, thank you. Hey, hey wait a minute. Aren't you our Hugh SVP, Global CIO and Services Solutions CTO at Lenovo? I am. Thank you, Julia. I'm so excited to be here that I wanted to deliver your ThinkPad personally. Thank you, Art. I so appreciate that. Now, we just heard from YY about the scale of Lenovo's operations. And I understand you've recently invested in more smart factories to deal with customers' growing demands. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Absolutely. From our smart factories, we're shipping more than 150 million devices annually. That works out to about five devices a second. Now, I'm not hand delivering each of those, but it's critical to have the latest technology. The digital helps us achieve the efficiency and the accuracy at scale, and the smart helps us take the latest operating models and incorporate AI into our operations. Of course, SAP, S4 HANA, has been helping us power that journey, and it's one of our cornerstone investments in that modern, digital, and smart core. Fantastic. Now, I know that Lenovo is also focused on sustainability in your business, right? And this is a priority across so many companies that are here today. So I'd love to hear about what Lenovo is doing. Yes, like you, we're seeing sustainability moving to the forefront in our conversations with our customers across all levels, all geographies. This matches perfectly with Lenovo's services-led transformation that we're driving. Let's take, for example, device as a service, DAS we're able to design sustainability into each step of the offering. We can think about how to deploy efficiently, maximize utilization during the asset lifecycle, and use recovery services for secure and responsible handling at the end of the useful life. So this way, by reimagining our services with sustainability in mind, we're able to do right by our customers and our sustainability goals. The right technology and services means being able to say yes to more things and the right things. I love it. 
Now, pivot a bit and talk to me about Lenovo's transition from a company that was primarily focused on hardware, right, to becoming a full service technology solution provider. Well, we like to say at Lenovo, we know transformation because we're starting it and doing it with ourselves. We call it Lenovo Powers Lenovo. Now, we've revamped our entire company with new services-led business models supported by the modern digital infrastructure. SAP, again, has been along the journey with us. Beyond smart factories and SAP S4 HANA, we're using cloud services from SAP to great effect. We've got Ariba in the cloud to gain visibility into our procurement spend and better guide it. We're using Concur, for example, to manage employee expenses and provide a better experience. On the front lines of our transformation, Lenovo TrueScale, which is our umbrella for offering everything in our portfolio as a service, that's been a key trend. And to make it work, we've needed the ability to engage our customers differently than the traditional hard hardware sale, billing by period, by service, by item. And here we're using the billing and revenue innovation management, BRIM, on Rise with SAP, powered by Lenovo TrueScale. So this allows us to rapidly bring new business offerings to the market in a scalable way. One final piece from our partnership to share today. We're working to co-identify innovation opportunities or co-innovation with SAP, where we're taking what we're doing together on transformation, figuring out what other companies may require, and turning that into code and functionality for the SAP marketplace as solution components. This makes the entire community and ecosystem more valuable. All this comes together to make an excellent case where we're using the combined power of our technologies to advance our transformation at speed and lead the way with new compelling value propositions for our customers. All right, thank you so much for sharing your story and the transformation that you've gained as well. And of course, thanks for the laptop. <laughs> You're welcome. All right, now, Atasha, over to you. Thank you, Julia. Last year, we took a major step forward, bringing together the Ariba network, the logistics business network, and the asset intelligent network to create the world's most vibrant business network. Since last year, we've combined the power of the asset intelligence with external workforce management to optimize work order collaboration while minimizing costs and improving worker safety. We've made it possible for companies to buy goods for Amazon Business Marketplace directly through SAP Business Network. And this year, we're adding logistics business carriers to the network, enabling companies to collaborate with even more trading partners across their supply chain. If you are a company like Lenovo and investing in your supply chain innovation and driving process improvements, there's no better way to extend the value of those changes outside of your four walls than by engaging with your trading partners through the SAP Business Network. And our innovations are not just about the buyer. They are about the full end-to-end -end process, including your trading partners. You see suppliers, logistics providers, contingent labor force also benefit from meaningful, ongoing collaboration. The network creates value for all partners and allows suppliers to have more visibility into the needs of their buyers to be more collaborative and efficient in their customer interactions, and ultimately to be more agile so that they too can adapt and adjust and build stronger, more resilient relationships. Don't believe me? Let's hear directly from one of the suppliers on our network, Boxprint, a leading Brazilian packaging company who works hand in hand with their buyer to create a more sustainable supply chain. Christmas, Valentine's Day, these are special dates. And if we don't deliver or with any mistake, we'll be ruining the whole promotion that the client had prepared. We can give the reliability our customers deserve through a systems integration. And this happens with SAP Business Network. Now we do have one basis, one only channel of communication, and this way we do have a visibility of our customer stocks. We what allows us uh, to anticipate the demand, and, the demand and have and proactive, proactive and, and more efficient, more efficient production. production. 
the integration sped up the entire process between buyer and seller. The process of sending quality inspection took much time to send the reports for each shipment. Uh, now with a few clicks, the process is finished. In addition to responding faster, uh, the system helps us to send the information more securely and with higher quality to our customer. We truly believe that SAP Business Network is the future because this will integrate systems and allow companies to grow these connections. It's a solution to expand the business. Now we've talked about collaboration, but ultimately our goal is to extend beyond the pure buying and selling. Our goal is to create and facilitate healthy, resilient businesses, which includes providing working capital management solutions for both buyers and suppliers. In March, we announced the acquisition of Talia that allows us to do just that. We offer supply chain financing, receivables financing, and cash forecasting solutions, among other things. And we aren't stopping there. We want to be the network of networks. We want to power all B2B networks to deliver network as a service so that others not just survive, but thrive. So what does this look like? You know, cars are a great example of a product that comes together as a result of many networks collaborating. Perhaps you're like my husband and you see a car as a tool that gets you from point A to point B. Or maybe you're more like me and see it as a lifestyle icon. No matter what your relationship to cars is, they are complex machines made from components that come from many well-known suppliers across industries. And each component consists of more components and parts that come from even more suppliers. So you need a finely tuned supply network to make a car or any other complex product. And you can't just lean back, cross fingers, and hope that all the parts and all the components from all the suppliers magically come together to make a final product. To tackle that complexity, automotive OEMs and their suppliers have created the Katina X Initiative to make the automotive supply chain more sustainable, more resilient, and more efficient. SAP plays a unique role in making this vision a reality. We provide a secure and trusted gateway to share transactional ERP data with the Katina X world. But beyond the richness of our data, we provide key functionality such as global track and trace, which creates enhanced collaboration and transparency. And this, this is just the beginning. Together with our partners like Katina X, we will create innovative network aware apps for use cases we can't even imagine today. And making supply networks resilient, sustainable, and efficient goes way beyond the automotive industry and their suppliers. SAP is working with leading customers across all industries on creating networks that safeguard computer chip authenticity, that accelerate the development of new medicines like the COVID-19 vaccine, that fight ocean plastic, that deliver sustainable food that ultimately help the world run better and improve people's lives. Over to you, Christian. Yeah, really well done, Tosha, to show you the endless opportunities of the SAP Business Network. And you know, when, you, when I look at Catena X, I cannot tell you how proud you know, we are as SAP that we are bringing all main players of the industry together on one platform, in one network. Finally, let's turn to the challenge of lacking transparency around sustainability, and how can we turn that into the biggest 
opportunity for our society. Let's create a world which is more sustainable. For 50 years, we have been managing productivity for you, and we will continue to do so, for sure. But now, we want to help you to manage your queen line as much as we helped you to manage the top and the bottom line, showing that sustainability and profitability is not exclusive. So how are we going to do that? First, we are going to provide you reliable and compliant data sources to measure ESG, which means we are going to add a queen ledger in our ERP so that you can account for carbon as you account for financials today. Our CFO is very happy <laughs> to hear that. And in Concur, we are providing you the carbon footprint for every business travel your people will do. In success factors, we are providing you all the social data, including diversity and inclusion, for example. The business network you know, will bring together not only the data for your enterprise, but the carbon across the supply chain. And with the SAP Sustainability Control Tower, we are going to aggregate ESG data from SAP sources and non-SAP sources. I'm convinced that only SAP can offer you reliable ESG transparency for your enterprise. Based on this provided transparency, your business can take action because you can only act on what you can measure. And now, Susanna is going to show you how our innovations will enable you to move from transparency to action. Over to you, Susanna. Thank you, Christian. I work with customers on their sustainability journeys every day. And there are three foundational steps that are relevant for all of them. Step one is to establish data transparency. This means capturing data reliably at source. We need to handle sustainability data same way as financial data, including auditability. Running ESG data on spreadsheets is no longer tenable. This transparency allows you to establish a baseline for sustainable operators. And the good news is that much of this data that you need to measure the green line Christian spoke about comes from SAP, S4 HANA, Ariba, digital supply chain, and success factors that you are already using today. Now you can use this data to create trusted and auditable reporting on your ESG performance to meet regulations and other external disclosure expectations. Step two is incorporating this data into every key process within your organization. You literally have to put sustainability into the heart of your operations. This allows you to start optimizing your non-financial performance, detect anomalies, forecast environmental impact of strategies, and adjust the way things have been done for decades in many cases. Take the source to pay process, for example. Historically, it's been focused on price, quality, plus few other criteria, but now, with the SAP Ariba Supplier Risk Solution and our recently expanded partnership with Ecovadis, you can embed best-in-class sustainability intelligence in real time into your source-to-pay process. This puts you on a path to run a much more sustainable and compliant supply chain. Step three 
is to extend sustainability across your business network. No organization can solve sustainability on its own. These issues have accumulated over time, and they can only be solved together with your business ecosystem. So step three is about extending your sustainability efforts to your suppliers, customers, and business partners at the network level. But the biggest and the most important challenge many organizations face is the decarbonization of the value chains. SAP supports this by enabling a standardized way of carbon data exchange between buyers and suppliers. This way, scope three emissions can be calculated using a new standard from the World Business Council for Sustainable Development. To make it simpler for you to drive sustainability into the core of your business, we have brought together all of SAP's sustainability solutions into a single offering. SAP Cloud for Sustainable Enterprises helps you reduce emissions, minimize waste, improve social equality, and to report on and steer that ESG performance. But now, let's look how Unilever is using SAP and our partner solutions. At Unilever, our purpose is to make sustainable living commonplace. In recent years, we've seen the challenges for consumer brands tracking raw materials across their supply chains. Palm oil can be a complex ingredient that consumers are much more conscious of in their day-to-day -day lives. And as a key ingredient that supports the livelihoods of around 4.5 million people across Indonesia and Malaysia, we want to progress towards our vision of a supply chain in which sustainable palm oil is the norm. With SAP, we can now preserve information about the origins and identity of the palm oil that flows from the mill to our factories providing more transparency and traceability in our supply chain. SAP's solution provides granular transparency at the scale of our supply chain. And in a single click, we can receive data on palm oil purchasing that impacts millions of hectares of land and forest. Together, we're building transparency and partnership with our suppliers and supporting our 2023 deforestation-free supply chain ambitions. Thank you, Susanna. And I also have to say in this moment, I'm also very proud about our 40,000 en engineers who worked really hard to expand our data models for ESG and to infuse sustainability into your business processes. Sustainability is a team sport. We heard about our partnership with EcoVardis because no one can solve this biggest challenge alone. A vibrant ecosystem is key. So in the last year, we also worked hard to expand our network with customers, with partners, with startups. Among them, you see BCG, Capgemini, Deloitte, EY, and PwC. One very important partner is Accenture. And now, I'm very, very happy to welcome with me Julie Sweet, the CEO of Accenture. Welcome, Julie. Thanks, Christian. I'm uh, very excited to be here. I'm sorry I can't be there in person. As you know, I'm having my very first leadership meeting of my top 700 leaders since before the pandemic. But uh, I'm super excited to come to you virtually. Yeah, thanks a lot, uh, Julie. And look, um, SAP and Accenture have a long-standing partnership, both as a customer and as a partner. And Accenture is, under your leadership, on a very successful path to transform into an intelligent and sustainable enterprise. So let's talk a bit about your journey. And what kind of opportunities do you see with SAP and why with SAP? Well, thanks, Christian. Uh, 
you know, one of the things you and I first talked about actually when we met was our shared commitment to sustainability, not only with our clients, but with ourselves. And what I'm very excited about is that SAP is an important part of the journey for Accenture and for our clients, because we do think about it holistically. We believe sustainability is one of the forces that will shape the next decade, and the leading companies will be the companies that are able to harness that force. And for us, that means how we operate and how we embed it in our strategy. And so when we think about how we operate, SAP has been an important partner. So first of all, we started on s hana Finance very, very early. And we needed it not just to close our books, but to get access to the kind of real-time data that we use in order to operate sustainably. And we're very proud that we recently became the first in our industry to report against six, the big six ESG frameworks. And we could not do that without our partnership with SAP. You were absolutely critical in our ability to get that data and to do it on a timely basis. And you can check that out uh, because I know so many of our clients are on that same journey. If you go to the Accenture website, we have the Accenture 360 degree value reporting experience where you can see how that really comes to life. And now we just announced our RISE partnership. And of course, we're already in the cloud, as you would expect. We brought, we took SAP to the cloud uh, early on. And that, by the way, was a huge um, impact for our sustainability, because when you operate in the cloud, it in and of itself reduces emissions. But with RISE, we are going to be able to operate even more uh, efficiently. And that frees up investment capacity for us to do the things that are really important, like creating with you sustainability services and solutions that are going to help our clients, which is the other part of our sustainability strategy, because it's not a nice to have. It's not just good for business. We do feel like there's a responsibility to do so. So we feel uh, incredibly lucky to be your partner in all aspects. Yeah, thanks a lot, Julie. And I also have to say I'm very proud about the partnership as you know, our teams really joined up you know, across company. And they work together. They analyze the business operations. They also analyze you know, how sustainable certain business processes are. And what came out of that is a great, great transformation journey for Accenture. Now, Julie, we also we are customers and we are partners. And, uh, now we demonstrate how we can manage the top, the bottom, and the green line. What can we do together as Accenture and SAP for our joint customers? Great. Well, one of the things that I am very passionate about is that uh, we know that our clients are spending hundreds of millions of dollars right now on digital business transformation. And that is absolutely critical for the business. And we also know that we can actually embed from day one sustainability to help them achieve those goals. And this often doesn't happen on its own because many times those who are thinking about their sustainability goals aren't at the table when someone is shaping their digital transformation because they don't understand the connection. And so one of the things that we've worked really hard to do is to create industry by industry solutions that embed into the digital transformation sustainability. And a great example is a global fashion retailer who issued an RFP to do SAP uh, all modules, so from finance to manufacturing, PLM, super exciting. And in that RFP, there was not a single mention of sustainability. And we went to them and said, look, we have already thought through how in your industry, a move like this to digitize your business and deploy S4HANA across these, um, um, these modules can help uh, your sustainability goals. So for example, building in the ESG KPIs and tell they, how they create the collection of data, a digital twin for product development to reduce physical prototypes and samples, and an ERP that will be integrated with blockchain to help them later be able to trace materials and products. Now, I recently talked about this on my own investor and analyst day, and I had to tell my investors and analysts 
that embedding sustainability in this way is not going to create a lot of incremental revenue for Accenture. Now, that may be a bad news for my investors, but it's good news for our clients because the whole point of what we're doing is to digitize and achieve the goals, build it in so it doesn't become an investment choice later. And so you can then have more money to actually invest in doing things like in the retail where you have um, you know, the circular economy and clothes coming back and doing all of that innovation. And then I think about really the other pieces that we're doing is we're also creating those sustainability specific modules that will allow companies to measure and track and reduce plastic and packaging waste and be participating in the circular economy and building new uh, business models. Uh, and so those are the things that you know I see us doing and it isn't by accident, right? I mean, this was a deliberate discussion and strategy really from the time you and I both became CEOs about what we can do, uh, not only for ourselves, but for our clients. And I, I think it's super exciting. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Julie. And I especially like, you know, our focus on industries. Uh, worth to mention is also our threefold partnership with Siemens, where we are actually building a digital thread from the front office down to the shop floor for any manufacturer across the globe. Now, truly, our partnership uh, is, a, is a long-standing one. And yesterday at the partner reception, I met your team, and I looked only into you know, happy faces, smiling, and said, Christian, this won so well. And, but of course, they asked me the question, hey, what comes next? And I said, that's a good question. I asked this your CEO today. So Julie, what makes our partnership so special, and what comes next? All right. I love that question. Well, first of all, in terms of it uh, being special, I do think it's special that we are each other's clients, right? So you are seeing, you know, in your team every day, the power of Accenture at SAP as you're transforming. We're seeing the power of SAP at Accenture as we're transforming. And then together we're saying, wait a minute, can we do something better? Right, And so we're working together. We're often a beta for each other's services. And that benefits both of our companies, but it definitely benefits our clients. And one of the reasons we wanted to be very early to S4 HANA Finance is we saw the capabilities, but also at our scale, we could be you know, a place to trial and to improve things. And not just the technology, but the solutions. And I think as you and I have discussed, you know, as we think about what our clients need, it isn't services and technology separate. It is actually joined up solutions. And I think what we've seen over the last three years is that um, we have together really been driving, like with sustainability, the creation of solutions. And we've often done that with our clients, with other partners like Roland at Siemens. And I think in terms of what's next, continuing to start with what our clients need, which is not a set of discrete things, but actually our know-how, our experience together to help them go faster, we call it compressed transformation, is really what we need. And we're gonna continue to build all of these things in around sustainability, around diversity, you know, all the things that our clients care about in addition to um, the business case. And of course, we will, as companies, also continue to invest in our communities. We're doing great work uh, together at the UN around sustainability to bring this know-how to more companies, uh, bring new kinds of processes. And I look forward uh, for us together to be also uh, continuing to invest together in our communities. Yeah, Julie, I could not have said it better and uh, look at Business transformation and sustainability is team sport, and I'm convinced that together we will not only have an impact on our joint customer, we will make an impact on the people, we will make an impact on our society. Julie, many thanks for joining us today and have a great leadership summit. Thank you so much, and thanks for the partnership, Christian, you and your entire team, and thanks to all our clients. Take care. Have a great session. Good. Finally, there's nothing more to say than thanks to everyone who contributed to this keynote. Our customers, our partners, and a lot of people inside SAP. And to all of you, 
my shout out is, let's do it again. Let's reinvent how enterprises run for the next 50 years. Resilient, intelligent, and sustainable. I can commit to you that all of our 110,000 employees are focused and dedicated to make your business transformation a huge success. I wish you, first and foremost, health, and now, for the next days, a great and exciting Sapphire 2022. Thanks a lot. And now, I'm delighted to hand over to a colleague who will show you the power of our ecosystem. Please welcome with me, Ken Gay. Welcome, Sapphire. This is amazing. Just take a moment and take this in. Whether you're watching from home or virtually, you are in for a treat for this next session. We're talking about SAP and innovating with our ecosystem. I'm fortunate because in my role, I get to talk to founders for startups every single day. And they stretch my thinking and they stretch SAP's thinking. My name is Kange Kanene and I am proud to lead SAPIO Foundries North and Latin America. SAPIO Foundries is SAP's external startup accelerator. That means we go in the market, find the most interesting companies, and bring them into SAP's ecosystem. And I'm really excited to say that today, we have an example of an SAPIO company that's gonna to talk to you about how that adds value to our customers. And I promise you, you will be impressed by her. So without further ado, let's bring out the panel. Welcome, panel. Thank hey, you. Thank you. <laughs> so excited about today. So first of all, all the best to Thomas Sorcer Sig. He was supposed to join us today, but unfortunately, he is home sick with COVID, but we wish him a very speedy recovery. In his replace, we have the phenomenal Jan Gilg, who is the <laughs> president and chief product officer of s hana And he likes to play with his two kids on the trampoline. Welcome. <laughs> Jürgen Mueller, who is a member of the SAP Executive Board and Chief Technology Officer. Happy belated, I know you just turned 40. Awesome, and I'm right behind you, I turned 40 in August. <laughs> and Stephanie Penelin Chavez, Chief Operating Officer of Evaldi Group. She loves Legos, <laughs> welcome. And last but not least, Nina Mokovic, CEO of Sapphire Ventures, turning 50 in just a few weeks. And I'm just thinking about this, about this, Nino. You're the same age as SAP. Pretty cool. Indeed. Indeed. <laughs> so, Nino, I would like to start with you because Sapphire Ventures used to be um, SAP's corporate venture arm, spun out in 2011. So, since that happened, what is the relationship between SAP and Sapphire Ventures? Sure. And let me start by thanking you for having us on this great panel. Of course. Um, Sapphire is. Uh, a special place for me. We've actually named our firm after the event. Wow. Uh, and my first one was in 2006, so it's always a, feels like home. Uh -huh. um, but back to your question, so we've now been an independent firm for 12 years, an independent investment firm, but we've retained a very close uh, relationship with SAP, and SAP uh, remains our largest investor across all of our, uh, our funds. And through us, SAP is one of the world's um, biggest investors in enterprise software startups. The, um, 
uh, our returns uh, focus, as a financial investment firm, we're focused on financial returns, but there's also a big aspect of strategic value to what we do. And so we coordinate very closely with SAP and try to relay and share all the information on market trends and investment trends that we see with SAP and SAP customers, by the way. We host SAP customers in innovation days, uh, very often expose them to the relevant subset of the more than 3,000 companies that we have invested in directly or indirectly. Makes sense. And so since then, Sapphire Ventures is one of the most impressive venture capital firms on the planet. You have 87 companies in your portfolio across nine countries, $10 billion under management, 30 initial public offerings, 45 merger and acquisitions. Amazing. You know, I am so proud of what you and the team have built. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, and so because of that, of course, you are extremely credible. And so I'd love to hear from you from a macro perspective. What are the um, innovation trends post pandemic? Sure. Well, I'll start by saying that the last two years have been some of the craziest in my close to 25-year investment career. The uh, pandemic-induced acceleration of both cloud adoption in general, but also specifically the, um, the digital transformation urgency by large companies have created this mega trend that we see uh, across all software categories in almost every single industry. So that's been incredible to watch, and the revenue growth of startups has been um, nothing but stunning over the last couple of years, and certainly the investments into startups just as much with every quarter being a record-breaking one, one after uh, another, all again driven by the urgency of large companies to adopt technology to help them transform uh, and position themselves for the future. Fantastic. And so if we can be more specific and think about trends under that umbrella of, of macro topics. What would be three underneath, underneath those, please? Sure. So, so one that comes to mind, and this will be no surprise to anybody, is supply chain. Christian talked a lot about it. Yes. Um, more than $60 billion were invested last year alone in startups around making the supply chain more sustainable, more intelligent, more resilient. And it's great to see that all, all the great work that SAP has done in maintaining its leadership in that, in that space. Another one would be data and machine learning. As we're seeing more of the uh, workloads and data move to the cloud, uh, solutions that help customers manage, orchestrate, organize, and analyze that data have been in very high demand. And despite this great wave of investment, in a recent CIO poll we did, only 14% felt ready uh, for the data age. So expect much more uh, investment to come in the future in that, in that area. And then maybe a third one, the future of work. You know, from pre-pandemic to, to uh, remote work to now, for most companies, some sort of hybrid combined with a tight labor market and some of the, uh, the resignation wave, uh, the big, big resignation wave, uh, the great resignation wave, as they call it, uh, has created this perfect storm for people to have to modernize the workplace. So any solution or tool mm -hmm. uh, that helps company do that has been also in, in very high demand. So those three areas would be one I would highlight. Thank you. And Jan, in, the, in your organization, you develop a lot of the products in SAP's portfolio and a lot of them align with the trends that Nino just described. But in particular, we've talked about two topics that are top of mind for you, resilient supply chain and sustainable enterprises. Um, but in my mind, those two things are not necessarily distinct because you can have a resilient supply chain to help make an enterprise more sustainable. So can you um, contextualize that? We talked about an example in the context of um, producing a cup of coffee, how that makes sense there, okay. please. Yeah, absolutely. I, th I think um, Christian mentioned that earlier as well, right? Uh, there's so much um, disruption and complexity going on in supply chains. And sometimes it's good um, to put some numbers uh, behind that. And, and that is um, the coffee example that you referred to. I, I think that is actually pretty impressive. Uh, I think most of you probably had uh, at least one cup of coffee this morning. And if you think about what does it take uh, actually to get uh, from the farmer who produces the coffee bean all the way into your cup, actually there are 29 companies involved in such a supply chain across 18 wow. countries. And if I take one of our largest customers, which is Nestle, they, had, uh, they actually managed 288,000 farmers uh, across 2,000 brands of coffee that they sell. 
and uh, a total of 450,000 suppliers they're working with. And you can imagine how complex that is to manage such a supply chain and uh, actually keep it not disrupted. Great. And so on a broader scale, how, has, how does SAP's portfolio help the supply chain optimize so that it can be more sustainable? Yeah, I think at, at the end of the day, uh, how do you get to a resilient supply chain? You have to have uh, visibility and transparency. And uh, you have to be able to actually orchestrate the supply chain as well. And uh, at the end, we are offering solutions like in integrated uh, business planning uh, in order to get the visibility into the supply network. We are connecting into SAP's business network to get visibility across multiple tiers of that supply chain. And then uh, in terms of orchestration, uh, we integrate that then immediately into execution systems like uh, warehouse management, like transportation management, like SAP S for HANA Cloud. Uh, so with that, we do have a whole portfolio actually that helps customers uh, to manage their supply chain and make them more resilient. And then you can imagine we can also layer on the sustainability aspect because we're already managing the flow of um, value and we're managing the flow of material traditionally. And now we're adding this third dimension of also managing the flow of environmental information to really understand what is the carbon footprint uh, that is actually uh, being created while a product is being produced, while it is shipped, while it is brought to the customer. And I think that is something that customers are really uh, jumping on right now because this is not a nice to have anymore uh, to also look uh, after sustainable supply chains because if you look into the market and, and you know you probably can confirm that uh, about over a third of investors actually have global assets uh, that are related to um, companies that are sustainable. And then from a consumer perspective, two thirds of all consumers are also willing to pay a premium uh, for sustainable brands. So I believe this is really a win-win situation then between corporations and, frankly, the planet. I agree with you. And you're gonna, I want to take it to you. We know we're talking about how we get um, insights and trends from the ecosystem. And we know in our ecosystem there's a diverse use of platform technology. But SAP is excited to celebrate a milestone where the business technology platform, or BTP, has just crossed the one billion annual revenue mark, which makes that the fourth largest business unit in SAP. Amazing. So first, before we get into more detail, can you just tell us what is BTP? Sure, Kangi. So BTP for our customers and for SAP and for our partners is basically the business operating system, the innovation platform. So we help customers in the area of giving data purpose, Nino mentioned data and AI, also about integrating and extending. Christian talked about the clean core, and what customers can do with that. So for everything technology related in SAP, uh -huh. business technology platform is the choice. I see. So can you just make this real for us, please? How does BTV add incremental value to our ecosystem? Yeah, there's many, many stories to that. We have more than 13,000 live customers on BTP. But let me pick one, which actually relates to what we heard from Julia, from Christian, and also here today already, um, which is supply chains which are challenged and disrupted mm -hmm. due to various reasons. And then what we offer, what we help companies with is, for example, planning. Mm -hmm. Jan mentioned supply chain planning. So now actually companies live in a constrained world huh? where you cannot get all materials, so you cannot produce everything you want. So you have now to plan which materials will I be able to get, which you have different scenarios. Yes. And then what does that mean? What does it mean for your production? What does it mean for your suppliers? What does it mean for your logistics network? What does that mean for your workforce? Mm -hmm. Because depending on how much you can pr produce, you need different people. Then maybe it impacts your marketing spend as well. Because if you cannot ship to Orlando, for example, why would you run ads in Orlando for, if you are a consumer packaged goods company? And then also, of course, this all has impact on your financial plan and very important these days, onto your cash flow. Mm -hmm. So that's just one example where we can help custom customers in a very holistic way with their end-to-end -end processes. Thanks for that example. Another example of how SAP helps its ecosystem is through SAP AO boundaries. And as I mentioned before at the beginning, that is SAP's external ac accelerator. And it's a unique accelerator because SAP does not invest financially in the companies. It does not 
ask for equity, and there's no upfront fee. So literally, the objective is to extend SAP solutions and integrate them to add more value to customers. Ivaldi is a graduate of SAPIO. It was part of the cohort that was focused on COVID recovery in fall 2020. So Stephanie, what is Ivaldi, please? Yeah, so um, Ivaldi is a startup that I co-founded in 2016, so we're a little bit ahead of the game in terms of our concerns in de-risking supply chain for spare parts. So what we do is we have a software and services company, and we rely on the data that SAP is already collecting for you in your supply chain to help to analyze what parts you have that could be um, locally sourced through individual or private manufacturer. So end to end, we go from uh, analyzing your spare parts to figure out what is a candidate for advanced manufacturer engineering those parts, and if necessary, we'll also sell, set, help you to set up a local manufacturing center. An example would be we have customers who have a strong um, impulse to create benefits in the communities that they work in. So for example, we might help to create local manufacturing centers in the community so that the community can partner together with larger corporate customers. Okay, great. And so when you say that you are creating more digital inventory, is 3D printing an example of that? 3D printing is an example of that, but honestly, we're technology agnostic. Mm -hmm. So we'll use whatever technology is most relevant to save you money and save the environment, you know, a heavier footprint. Okay, great, thank you. Um, so can you talk more about the sustainability side of Evaldi? How do you measure the impact that Evaldi is making? I would love to do that. So one of the things that has amazed me working in this industry is how little the, the, you know, even high level executives in the companies that I've talked to really understand where their costs are. Because there's so many costs that historically in accounting we've sort of counted as, you know, unknowable. But with products like SAP, I mean, we all heard Christian this morning say, if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. Exactly. But if you don't have the know-how mm -hmm. to, um, to manage that data, right, well then you're not gonna be able to create actionable, cha actionable change as a result of that data. Right. So what we do is we review the data to find out how far are you shipping things? How long are they in inventory, mm -hmm. right? Um, how hard is it for you to source this? How long will your factory or facility be down if this part is not available? Mm -hmm. And we factor all of these things into uh, calculating your carbon footprint to figure out whether a part is going to be economically feasible to produce and also create an upside in terms of uptime and improved carbon footprint for our customers. So inspiring. Stephanie, why did you decide to join SAPIO? Wow, okay, so I am an internally focused person. I think my sales team would have a different standpoint, but they're not here, you get to listen to me. The reason that I am really excited about SAP is because data is, uh, it's really, it's amorphous and it's hard, for, it's hard for your human brain to get a hold of where it is and what it is. And working with large companies, you're gonna go through a lot of different steps to try to find the person who's gonna be able to help you to get this, unless you're already using SAP's S for HANA, for example. So using S for HANA, rather than having to really winnow down within a company who to go to, it's really as easy as sharing some credentials and plugging in our API. Um, the change can be really dramatic in terms of you know, the, um, the immediate startup that we can get to with our customers. Okay, so I imagine based on what you said, the value of SAP plus Evaldi is you can use SAP's inventory data, infuse it into Evaldi, and produce the results that you explained earlier. Is that right? Yeah, and I mean, I think what our customers are interested in really is finding money where you didn't know you were losing it. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, more and more importantly, it's very important to focus on, you know, reducing your carbon footprint. Great. And finally, what you're saying is super compelling. So I imagine customers want to engage with you. How do they find Evaldi? So, all of you here can check us out in the SAP App Store. The company name is Evaldi. Also feel free to reach out to us by email at info at evaldi.com or seek me out on LinkedIn. Great. Time flies when we're having fun. So one more quick rapid question for everyone to leave the audience with what to be excited for and what's happening next. So starting with you, Nino, for Sapphire Ventures, what can we expect to see in the next three 
to five years. So we see a lot of work in the areas we've talked about today, uh, but we do also are more and more curious about the blockchain, not so much as a currency or a store of value, but as an alternate technology platform for a different kind of enterprise application. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be watching that closely. Fantastic. Jan? Yeah, very similar. We obviously, um, first of all, I think uh, we'll see that software is becoming much, much modular, specifically at SAP. We'll see um, a true composability of our cloud services, uh, tightly integrated, very harmonious, much more flexible than today. And also, of course, AI will be ubiquitous, right? I believe this will be truly embedded in everything we do. And of course, we're also looking at Web3 uh, and some of the trends here and how we can leverage those technologies for smart contracting. What do we do with crypto? I think we'll see uh, a lot of innovation actually coming from that space. What's next for Ivaldi, Stephanie? So I think that what gets my team excited, you know, in addition to having a real economic positive impact for the people that we work with, uh -huh. is um, you know, the, the ecological advantages that we're creating. And so what's important for us is to grow our customer base as much as possible to create the best uh, ecological impact that we can. Last but not least, Jürgen, your thoughts, please. Yeah, for us on the SAP engineering and R&D side, we like to think along uh, that in three horizons. So first horizon is now. What is important now? What do we need to work on? Then what will be important next? Mm -hmm. And what is new? And when I start with the new, I think about a lot of technologies we look at, from smart contracts to quantum computing to advances in latest uh, deep learning technologies. And here, what I see as impact in the new area is two main things that are coming up. One is, we call it the composable enterprise. So companies will continue to ca take care of end-to-end -end business processes, mm -hmm. but they will also want more flexibility. And with Esfahana, we do the first step. But we will see that this becomes more and more advanced. Mm -hmm. And it will span SAP and non-SAP business capabilities that can be composed. The second one um, is about augmented cross-planning and analytics. Mm -hmm. So we foresee a system that actually is continuously monitoring everything that's going on in a company. And then it also understands what you want to achieve. Right. And it understands when there are deviations. So it comes up even with a proposal, hey, Kangi, something is going wrong, and here are a few proposals, what, what you can do. Right. Then when I come to the next, I think it's pretty clear, it is for us uh, business process insights with SAP Signavio, huge potential, even more than it has today. Uh -huh. Business networks, we learned about that a lot today, yeah. with great presentations. And then also it's the area of industry clouds where we work with our customers very closely together, building industry cloud capabilities on the business technology platform. And I make it short for the now, because across our teams, we are delivering thousands of roadmap items mm -hmm. for our SaaS applications and the business technology platform per year. Mm -hmm. So we're really enhancing everything customers can use today. And if you're not using our SaaS solutions, our BTP, I really encourage everyone to start doing that and expanding the usage because we see so many great customer value cases where we really can help with technology, with software, to helping your customers gain a competitive advantage in this very, very volatile world. Thank you, Jürgen. We heard today from Christian that when technology and people come together, amazing things happen. You heard from the panel about how SAP interacts with its ecosystem. I invite all of you to take in Sapphire, the people, the content, the fun, and supercharge your ecosystem. Nino, Jan, Stephanie, Jurgen, thank you for joining me. Thank all of you. Enjoy Sapphire. Thanks a lot, Kangi.
Nothing like I've ever experienced 